and they did this really wonderful example. Guess what? The Titanic. All right. So you can see here, let's put this away. This is the Titanic. X marks the spot. Yeah. It's a worldwide map. In blue, it shows the course of the Titanic. Titanic crosses the English Channel. Cherbourg. Queenstown, uh, then Queenstown, yeah. You can see in those bubbles where people are coming from, where the incident was. You also can see the destination. But did you know that people on the Titanic, there have been actually people from India. They survived. Four passengers have been from India, yeah? and Richard Baker, or Becker, from India, boarded in Southampton, had the destination of Benton Harbor, Michigan, was one year old, and survived, and was located in lifeboat number 11. Wow. I used to live in Finland. So you go and take a look at where you used to live city of Turku. There have been three Finnish people, Anna Sinkonan, who happened to be destined for Boston, Massachusetts, and survived. Another soul and her story. What I really also like is I used to live in Idaho. So there are not many people heading to Idaho. I used to live here. So this is one person in Mountain Home. We know Mountain Home from the Air Force Base. Uh -huh. So, Anti Sivola, another Finnish guy, died, uh -huh. was born in Southampton, hometown is Mountain Home, uh -huh. was apparently scheduled to come back, but has a Finnish name. Uh -huh. So, there's definitely some Scandinavian Finnish heritage. So, really cool. This is all the passengers. First class, second class, third class. Oh, look, we have folks from Turkey. The middle of Turkey, we have a few folks coming and traveling. You can see based on the color coding, not everyone made it. Same element, wanted to go to Canada. Oh. So what I want to do right now with you guys is, I'll give you about five minutes. Let's go to storymaps.esri.com. Yep. Yep, storymaps.esri.com. I want you to explore story maps. There's a gallery here. You can find some ready-made already ones. Yep. For story maps, no. Story maps com helps you there too. Should not be, you should not need to sign in. Explore studies. Where's the gallery? One thing I did not check yesterday evening. Here we go. Moving. Uh, let's double check this. Story. Maps Esri dot com We sign in, we are actually classic story maps here. Looking for the classic Esri story maps, click here. Here we go. Gallery. They changed it. If I click on the gallery here, again story maps dash classics. ArcGIS.com, click on gallery, you can see all these different topics. And I want to use that little moment here to give you an exposure that not everything is done based on business data. 
those st story maps are putting humans on the map and their stories and their souls. Uh, so what have we done? Again, I repeat this so you can find it. Um, I typed in story maps dot s3.com or story map maps dot .com. and down here it says looking for the classic s3 story map click here and I went to gallery and I can find different ideas And there's a search button on the side. I'm just checking in Amazon because they will be heavy usually on current elements. Nope. Let's type in wildfire as an example. And you actually see here the story map labs for wildfire for the US. Alright, so currently these are the active wildfires in the US and you can see depending on the sign of the mini sun here, what's the size of the fire, you can zoom in and you can actually get some information. But also you can click down. This is a live reporting, this is not necessarily a story, but it gives you an example how you could use fairly live data or data that updates every day into a simple context. All right, I'll give you about the <coughs> yeah, till 10.35. I want you to play with this. Google Maps is a similar navigation, but these are thematic different to other topics. And it helps you, this is kind of the mapping interface we're going to do with the ArcGIS Online. We're not doing a, a story map per se, but you're getting the feel of it. And I think this is mind-opening in terms of what kind of stories you can find. Search anything you want. You might get lucky with it. You just want us to search and look at stuff? Search and look at stuff. And keep in mind, this is a new system. This is using geographic information systems. Yeah. And it's producing a different way of telling a story, really using a story map. It uses the, the, map, the, the, the system of the map to add and tell more about this. Take a look at life, wildlife, take a look at social issues, history. That's a real estate class. Maybe there's something on real estate. Anything cool so far? Let's see by the names. Uh, Brian, I know you. Cole, you know. Can we find anything new? Uh, something cool? Trying to, or are you looking for right now? Alright. No, here. Have you found something yet? Don't want that. Anything really cool or amazing you guys found already? Say what? Typed in real estate. Okay, real estate. First hit housing affordability, mortgage magnitude. <laughs> golf, golf stuff, Memphis commercial real estate development, lifestyle portfolio. A day, winter day at the Strand. Okay, this sounds like. Uh, so this is a different format here on, let's say, a story map. 
they're not always to scroll down and, and to the left. So this is actually almost a tutorial, like a photo album presentation. Yeah. Oh, I did the winter day at the Strand. And um, China Ghost Towns as an example. Similar pattern. Yeah. So you associate a picture, part of a short information story here, maybe more inf information with the location on a map, and you combine those elements. So say number five, Hunan province, and it tells you a little bit the story. Huh? This could be a way to present data. Yeah. What we also will learn is in the online components of this class, there is actually a way that you can use the web-based elements as a, into a presentation mode. So you don't necessarily have to screenshot everything and put it into a PowerPoint. Hoping that you have live internet, you could actually do that as an interactive virtualization. Uh, give you a few more minutes and then we have a few more shout outs for some e examples. And what you might not realize right now is remember when I said something about point? lines, polygons, and raster data sets. You are doing this right now. You're streaming through someone's work compiled as a so-called story map to have you experience their work on spatial data, people, and yeah, the story. Can it be okay you guys running this? How can I help? Someone who's mapping out the hurricanes. Not just one, multiples, okay. I count four hurricane screens right now. Cool. Just the season. Just the season. Actually, we see if we have time today to get actually into hurricanes. Okay. Uh, wildlife and birds. Someone is looking at canyons. Cool. So, is that something you think is really good, really great? Would you use that in your real estate team to tell your boss, hey, we need to buy those five acres of land? How many folks would use that to tell, create a portfolio and say, I want to build this and for land acquisition? Hands up. All right, after we're done today, and if not next week, you will not use story maps anymore, you will use other tools. So this is just, the, that's crack, it's the first crack of Pandora's box. Let's open up all the misery. All right. I like this to start GIS. I made this really, really distinct decision not to use it as an assignment. If you want to learn more about story maps, you're more than welcome to play with it. There are certain buttons and checkboxes I need to click in account management. I can open that up for you if you want to. There are some training sessions out there. The book has some story map material in there. That's one of those, skip it and just review it. Huh? Important message. It's a really fun thing, a story map. Don't spend five hours on exploring a story map and not using that time for other important things in this class. Yeah? 
I need you to understand how to navigate with data, where to place data, and how to deal with it. It's more important than having a shiny story map. Again, I have 32 hours to teach you excellence. Good. More PowerPoint. Since we have a browser open, let's go to a web browser, say it's called www.arcgs.com. You have received yesterday an email that did invite you to log on on ArcGIS Online and using your email address. So if my student would call me Friedrich Schiller, go figure, he's German poet and author, yeah. and his student's email address in this university would be fs568. The student's account would be fs568 underscore red, and the password you changed. It is completely okay if you have not done this. Yeah. Sometimes first session of class and 8 o'clock you open up, hey, what's in the interwebs? Yeah. If you have not done this yet, check your email. I gave everyone one point so you have an active account. Those who did send their subscription until 1.30 a.m. this morning, 1.27 a.m., someone pinged me. I'm not sure it was you or was it Brian. One or the other. I put you 3,000 points on there. Huh? Uh, we might end up in today doing a few things where it says, hey, it costs you five credit points, online credit points. It's like a prepaid credit card. Huh? So I basically gave you all, as teenagers, repaid credit cards and say, go to the mall. Let's go shopping. Huh? Again, if there's some issues, more than happy to help. This is mission critical. You need to read your emails. You be aware that by Thursday evening, you probably have two or three emails about this class. Something you might want to consider to prepare. Something, uh, maybe a change. Huh? More updates. Hey, have you thought about this? There was a problem about that. Yeah. So please, at least once a day, check your email. You have some serious trouble when you miss class and not read your email. Communication is key in here, in all of these cl classes. It's a fast-paced program. Everyone who has been in at least one class in this program, they know when to take a breath. So everyone who's new in this setup, Talk to your fellow students. Recharging your batteries in between sessions is important. I keep telling as a grad student, you should have at least one evening off for social life. Do it a Friday night. Friday night. Date night, chill out night, laundry night, whatever you have in plan. Don't work for your classes. Should be done already or during the days. Huh? Something like that. My night was Friday night before I start teaching. Huh? Helps. Um, I keep telling you graduate from this program, your whole family and friends graduate from this program. Yeah, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, even your roommates are part of your success in this program. Why? Because they keep you reminded about your deadlines and how you manage your time better because you want to balance life and work and school. A huge, huge challenge for you guys. If you need help with this, we can talk. Huh? I took, one reason why I took out assignments, I had students who were finishing the assignment in the appropriate one hour or two hour time, and I had students eight to ten hours working on it because they ran against the wall and the wall and the wall. I'm like, why are you not sending an email after you've done this three times? There is maybe a simple explanation. You missed a comma or a typo, and boom, it doesn't work. Excel is not forgiving at all. If you do typos, Excel says something wrong in your, fu in your function and you still have to figure it out. GS is the same. All right? Anyone in this room right now ready for some log on exercise, ArcGIS? Yeah? All right. So, next page is actually ArcBro. Ha ha ha. Tricked myself. On your computer, let's do this two different ways. On your computer, which looks different from my computer screen. There are two ways to open up ArcPro. 
multiple ways. You might find a button on your computer screen right now. Yeah. There's also the way of clicking down here on the Windows key. And you go to All Apps. Scroll down. And we're dealing with a software called ArcGIS. Not Argus. Argus is done by the Altos Group. Argus is Enterprise and Developer. Welcome to the winter semester. This is fall. Okay? So we're dealing with ArcGIS. My ArcGIS will look different than yours. Different installations, different version numbers. We are looking for ArcGIS Pro. Like we look at the book, ArcGIS Pro. <laughs> if you find this very, very tiresome to actually go and click all here, you can also type in ArcGIS Pro. It will pop up and find you. Okay. I click on this and have it activated. So in theory, no, it starts twice. I see what I, this is what I call a splash screen. And I did not sign out. Yeah, yeah. I, let me do this again. I have it here on the bottom. Pops up with a splash screen. Will take a moment panning on your computer. All right. Let me go through this on my computer right now. Then I will repeat it and help you to do this. At home, when you install this, and when once you're done with the installation package, and they just came out with a new one. I have not repeated that step, so I have not posted you guys a small PDF with the information and screenshots. So James came with, hey, I have a problem with sign up. Yeah? In this computer lab or at home, there are two things you need to double check. First of all, in theory, it should pop up like this and will ask you for the so-called ArcGIS login. It might show a different log on and saying enterprise. Eh, eh. We are not doing ArcGIS enterprise. We're doing ArcGIS online. There are different ways to log on. In theory, it gives you the opportunity even to log on with your Facebook account. Nope. Let's say this in the microphone. No Facebook. Yeah? And no BS as well for Aaron before 4.30. Just like, He's like, hey, <laughs> Yeah. All of your Arc Pro and GS work in this class is done by a what we call Tech Talk, a Arc GS online organization. That is this university with me administering it and dealing with your user accounts. A so called named user. Yeah. Important. The named user in this case is your username underscore RED. If you don't see this screen here, huh? see something different. It might be, and this is the tech talk, might be that it says configure, configure your license options. And it pops up with a weird form, and it might say here, license type. If something goes wrong, if this is grayed out, your computer lab computer is, has the wrong installation. We are working on this. Huh? At home, if you install it at home, if something looks really weird, we keep this in mind. If something really looks weird, this is the first place to look at it. You do have a named user. The book gives you a license for single use for 180 days. With this programming here, with real estate, it's a named user. You can use on the local installation, linking to the internet, and you can use in your web browser in the internet. You can use business analysts online in the internet with the same account and it's the same framework. It will talk to each other. That's the beauty of it. Whatever you do in here, you can shoot up to the cloud and you can work in the cloud with it as well if you set it up the right way. Named user. All right. 
This is important. This is as important as your social security number. Huh? So I keep this name user, I cancel out so not to make any stupid things. Open this up again. So again, splash screen. Yeah. Another thing, sign me in automatically. You should deactivate that. At home, doesn't matter. If it's a publicly shared, one reason why I ask you to log on with your student's account is because it remembers your student's account. If you use today this, account lib7 and you forget to say sign me automatically like remember my account it might remember your account chances are very low that someone else is using GIS and doing this I only have like a hundred students total all university but you don't want to mess around with that worst case scenario your data gets deleted or manipulated in a way you can't control so stick with this Deal with this like it is your email account, social security number. Well, email account, bad enough. Yeah? All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in with one of my students' accounts, Friedrich Schiller. And I hope I remember his password. Takes a moment. This looks or will look slightly different from yours. Why? Because this is the stuff I work on my computers. Yeah? Some projects and research. But you should have like a big setup here. It says open new templates. And I click on new, open up a new map. Then don't press OK. We gotta do two or three more things before. Speaking of two or three more things. Yeah, template blank document. For the purpose of this training exercise, we're going to skip a few steps. We're getting a little bit more anal with data management and how we structure our data step by step. Now you can see here right now, it says it wants to start a project and I can name the project. It also says where it wants to save this. Since this is my laptop, it wants to put it in my documents under ArcGIS and projects. We are going to do one simple thing. We are going to create, when we start doing little uh, demos, we're going to create a project folder on the local hard disk on the C drive. It's called GIS Class 2019. We're going to place everything into that bucket. And the reason why I say the bucket, because I rather have, like, every time I point at this little tiny blue bucket, put everything into the bucket and know it's there. Why? Because if I'm here in the classroom, I can take the bucket, put it on the USB jump drive, and take it home. And I find the cereal bar and the coffee I put in earlier at home. Yeah? Backups, backups, backups. If I don't do that, if I just let this guy be whatever he wants to be on the computer, I'm stick to the machine. As in, Isabel needs to sit on this computer now every time in class because she didn't do the data management right. Tonight, uh, today, we don't worry about that. I want you to get playful with the software. But what we're going to do is pretty much we're going to create one folder in one place and at the end of the session we can clean it up and take it home. Uh, or we don't care because it's a demo or you repeat it. Very important. It's a little bit bothersome, might not be the cleanest way to do things, but if you come back in six to eight weeks and want to re-practice, you need to remember, I download data, put it into a bucket, work my, my stuff in the bucket, and I keep it. Think about the bucket as an external hard disk. Everything on the external hard disk. It doesn't matter which computer you're going to use. Yeah? Um, we'll practice this next time. For the time being, I want to go and open up that software. All right, that means I just call that introductions. 
And today, I don't care where the system is going to place this. Because this is a detail I will take care of next week. Okay? And I click OK. Okay. This might look slightly different. Very, very different. It's loading. Is it the other? Alright, we're gonna reset you guys. Carter, come in. Who is not logged in yet? Unlock chairs. Alright, got a quick break, reset your passwords. I will address this. Well, if you're logged in, you can look at the tools like, hey, there's a ribbon for maps, insert, analysis. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the, for everyone passwords right now. Who looks at the screen right now and sees something completely different? Different. All right, in, ha in case you don't have a map loaded, you might end up uh, looking at something like this. Let's go to insert. All right, the way the software is structured, Microsoft made the deal of it. Everyone now is thinking ribbons are really cool. Yeah? So everything on here is ribbon based. I have a channel body, I have my project, which has a lot of internal stuff. You can say project templates, yeah, I can go back, and again here, open new, we will deal with all of these little elements. The majority elements then is, I have a map, a map ribbon, but you also will see on the map ribbon, let me change the lights. Better. What do you mean? What do you have? You have right now, I have zero map, nothing on the. No, you don't have a ribbon. You, don't you have, have no ribbon. map ribbon. Right. Insert. Map. New map. Click on it. And you should get a new map. And a map ribbon. In case, in case you don't have a map ribbon, I never had that before. Uh, in case you don't have a map ribbon, you should see an insert, yeah, and then you can see here on the insert map new map, and say create a new map, <laughs> and now you can see it changes all these functions and buttons. And you should have a map ribbon appear. This also could be the case that this is the first time you log in. Been a while that the software was installed. We're working on updates. I asked not to update. Next week it might look different. Can happen. GIS software usually gets released in July. So all summer, craziness, different versions. Argus. Enterprise and developer software for your winter class gets released on Thanksgiving. So I gotta, I'm really busy in December to update all the videos for your online class. Yeah? Alright. So, again, today we're trying to figure out where are things and trying to get a feel on basic navigation. Huh? This whole software is built on tabs. Pain, uh, planes, and paints, paints, uh, P A N E, and ribbons. The important thing to remember: 
some functions on those ribbons are active or grayed out depending on what type of data you're dealing with. Yeah? Is that a question or is it that was okay? Yes or no, and we will do that. All right. So the most annoying, but also the coolest part in Arc Pro is those ribbons. And I mean this with the annoying part is because you need to understand where is what. And we're doing this very slowly, and you will find sometimes, uh, you need to remember exactly where it is. So I can, like we do this in Google Maps, if I'm on the map ribbon and I have a map open right now, you should see, let's say, the United States. Huh? Using my mouse wheel, I can zoom in and zoom out. Click on it. If you can't click on it and move it, you need to check here if your navigation is on explore. Huh? Benny, you logged in? Are you following? Okay. There are other buttons and features we can work on and deal with. Yeah. If we don't like the current, what we see here, the current base map, yeah, we can go and zoom in to Miami and you can see this is different type of how we visualize the real world. If I don't like this, I can say, I click on base map on that little arrow and I could pull anything like this from the interwebs and put it in a different perspective. That's like in Google Maps if you're on your app and you switch from satellite to roads. Well, in this case, I click on imagery. And now I see the bay and can zoom in. Miami, 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 Miami. Port Everglades, Inlet, Dive Boat, Oceanographic Center. You can even go in and see how far and close up you can go. So if you're a marine bio student, this is your building. Also, now I have two base maps. I said I slice and dice the real world into layers. How do I control my layers? Well, let's go to view and take a look at the content. It says shows the content pane. Might be mispronunciated. Sometimes it's painful to open that up. If it does this, it shows on the left side my content. Remember when I said layers, slices and dices? Now I have here world imagery. Pun? Internet might be a thing and the computing power. I try to be slow and repeat if needed. Again, every time you are behind, raise your hand. I'm here to help. Sometimes it's that one mouse click or that one rock on. Yes, please. Perfect. Yes. You also, there's also here a button is called reset. On view, view ribbon, there's also a reset button that predefines a few things. Also, this is all floating and docking. Was tech talk, tech talk. Look what I can do. I go to contents, click with my mouse, left mouse, and I can move this. Now I can make rearrangements. See how I have predefined rearrangements? This is super annoying, also super cool for working on a laptop versus working on a larger screen. Or maybe if you have a laptop and a large screen combined at home. Or if you have two screens at your work. Because I can arrange based on my workflow the task I need to do, and my personal preferences, I can rearrange all these different setups. 
but it's also a standard default. Yeah? So personal preferences. If I do GS work, which is heavy on data, I have one big screen just looking at the table. I don't care about the map. Because for me, the map is just visualization between green and yellow and blue dots. But I'm taking care of all the little, like this huge Excel spreadsheet in, in the background. That's what I'm aiming for. Changing the data inside versus what's in the front. Again, it's the matrix. The zero and ones, and we do everything behind that screen. Yeah? All right. So, let's see if we can add another data. I also can do add data with a different point. If I click here on the add data button, the plus button, I have multiple ideas where to add that from. We're going there sooner or later. Is everyone aware of where we are located? Who is from outside of Broward County? All right. Outside as in Miami or out of Florida, Jacksonville, Mississippi, uh, Palm Beach, that's outside of Broward. <laughs> All right. Quick, we have the time and it's important. How do I find myself in a computer system? If you don't do Google Maps on a regular basis, if you're not aware of aerial photography, this is the 30 seconds how to find myself on campus. Yeah? Easy. Earth. Yeah? Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Florida. Depending on the imagery, this is a huge blue dot usually to find. Now if you look at the different base map, Different coloring, yeah. Streets of Florida, and I zoom in. Now I see different features. This apparently is the Florida Keys. We know Miami is on the bottom right, Lake Okeechobee. Zoom in more. I have no idea where Palm Beach is or Miami right now. I know certain features. Here, this is where 75 comes in. Because if I zoom in, this makes a specific cut. This is Weston. 27, 595. I can follow 595 and I will end up at the airport. So if I have no idea of labels, I can find easily this place, zoom in, find the very distinct structures, airport, port, las olas, huh? airport helps, Five, uh, 595 east west, 95 north south, I try 595, try 595, and at some point, you gotta zoom in a little bit closer, I see certain structures. Yeah? Like big lake, golf courses, or street layout, Pine Island Road. Very curvy. And it helps me to find the university drive. And that little blue dot here is the competition pool. So I find the university. Without any labels, airport, go west 595, hit it. Because sometimes we get lost and then we need to find a way to do this. There's also a way, this is a new, fun really cool function. You don't want to do this all the time. So you find your airport as an inlet, airport, zoom over, lake, curvy roads, pools, If this would be a web page, what would we do? Would bookmark it, huh? We can bookmark in GIS. Click on bookmark here. It says new bookmark, manage bookmarks, import bookmarks. Yeah. If I say new bookmark, I can call it NSU. Hit OK. And now anywhere in the world I am, 
click on bookmarks, go to NSU, boop, back. If lost, setting a bookmark helps. Particularly if you come back to the same site multiple times in a project, helps a lot. All right. Let's go through those uh, different uh, elements here. <clears throat> Apparently, I have the map. I can manipulate the map. I can do a bunch of things. We can have here a, a, a section or modules that deal with selections. We will deal with that later. I can select by location and by description. Everyone who have wears a red t-shirt in this classroom can be selected based on the color of the t-shirt on the data table. Everyone in row number two is selected by the location identified as row number two. Yeah? I could go with any attribute you go, you're wearing right now. Everyone with a UM t-shirt, please leave the classroom. No, just kidding. I could select you because your attire right now has a description saying UM t-shirt. If Andrew's t-shirt is just marked up as gray and t-shirt, I cannot select UM t-shirt as an example. If you say dress shirts, white, I'm not going to be selected. Huh? So think about this, a very complex Excel table in the, in the back end of your database and everything in the table, MLS listing. Uh, select all four bedroom homes in Broad County. It's a database operation we, we, can, we will be able to do with this class. All right. I have inserts. As we experienced, if something is not here, we can insert that. You also will see that we have different setups here. Don't click on it, just open it up. Just gently click on that arrow. Yeah? We will do a layout for different setups. Typically we're doing letter or legal. Yeah? For me it's more important to give you the understanding how to get to the layout than being really finicky about the perfect design. You're shaking your head, why? Well that super slow or? Yeah. All right. We might place you on a different computer then. It should be the same. Huh? All right. Then what we're going to do is, you can see this is opening up another Pandora's box. Analysis. Toolboxes, <coughs> redefined tools. And this is for folks who had exposure to GIS, completely different from old school desktop. Old school desktop, for me, is opening up tools. Let me just demonstrate this. Yeah. Toolboxes, and then going through all of these and find out what's behind the next door. If you have time, if you're really geeky, it is really cool stuff you can find. Yeah. Let's say analysis. You get all these different functions here. Yeah. Or proximity. It says buffer multiple buffers. Remember I talked about buffers and ring distances? This is the regular tool you can do, or these are the easy workflows for you. Yeah? We are going to use Enrich a lot because we want to find other data and combine it. Here's the buffer. Looks different than the other toolbox. Okay? Good. Then we go to the next ribbon, view. Everything that is on my screen, all those different panes and different sections can be activated and deactivated with view. So if something disappears, disappeared, in view I probably find it. Catalog pane, catalog view, contents. Content is my table of content. We'll take a look at this later. Huh? If it doesn't show up, no panic. Find it under view. Maybe it's hidden there. Huh? All right. Edit. We'll come to this later. You can see there are certain functions grayed out because 
We're pulling this world map right now. It's not our own data. We cannot change that. Imagery, not going to work on this heavily, but we'll see. Share is something really cool because it says web layer, web map. We have access to the cloud. We can do web maps. Huh? And we can do those maps down here as well on the machine. So we have a little bit of time. Let's open up your web browser. Let's go to arcgs.com. <coughs> yeah, arcgs.com. And we are signing in. Have you seen this today already? Yes. So if we, this looks the same thing like we have in Arc, in Arc Pro, we're going to use our Arc Pro account. In this case again, fsschiller underscore id and the password. Did your password reset work? Did you get the email? Oh, you and I will find time to get this ready to go. So please look closer to her on the screen, follow mine. There's another reason why we do the screen capturing. Yeah? All right. So. Friedrich Schiller is my test user. Friedrich was active in the system. So this startup screen might look a little bit different for you than for me. Yeah? You should not have a notification up here saying I was added to certain elements. Yeah? But you should see, be able to see organization, content, groups, scenes, map, gallery. If you click on gallery, I have to clean up a little bit. But within the organization, you would see other projects from other departments and colleges that have been active. Yeah? They're doing some really fun stuff, not really our problem. In theory, your work will show up there too. I'm trying to actually block that because if, if it's a quiz or an exam, you could look here and say, hey, what's Andrew doing when I'm sitting five feet away? Uh, we will figure this out. What I want to go is to content. And I click on all my content. Again, this user has been not, it's not fresh. This user has been in place. So there will, are different folders here and you probably see nothing right now. I just want to show you what is a little bit out there. Next week when we start from scratch with demos, I will have a different user that says, Start from scratch. Yes, please. It's a little bit off topic, but I'm assuming that if like the project what we saw before uh, we like got it in the system, like the website we showed us before, is that all are those maps associated with this program? Like with the, the university. Not with the university, but like where the map stores is trying to Yeah. Or the story maps. Yeah. Is it like similar to this? So what looks similar anyway. Alright, looks similar. So what Israel did is they adopted this apps system. Yeah, what was before a specific package. They adopted this app system. And if you click here on those little dots, you can see all the different apps that are available. Focus on the real estate class in GIS is going to be business analyst. You are right now in ArcGIS online, right now in your web browser. Again, this is super important, like Lily. Everyone nod your heads that you understand that. Before, how can you agree to something I didn't say yet? <laughs> so you understand that. ArcGIS Online and the premium application Business Analyst Online, we will touch later, are browser based in the cloud. Meaning, a typical Chrome or similar browser on any computer system will be able to run this for you. So Mac people, Apple people, 
You can sit at home on the couch and do exactly what we're doing right now. You can't run Arc Bro, which is Windows based. You have to find a way to emulate it or be on a Windows machine. Huh? Everything we're going to do in online setup, ArcGIS online or Business Analyst online, you can do this on any computer in the world with your account I gave you. You can be in the library on the big machines, you can be at home. Please do one thing not. A small 12 inch notebook in a coffee shop. It's not gonna work. You need to think about light, nice screens. 15 inch laptop works. If you have a larger screen at home, smart TV works. Connect your t computer to a smart TV if setup and sizing is issues. Huh? I had in the past, every time we teach online GIS, a simple hook in or major work. I had one or two students once in a while struggling with the concept of it's in the cloud. Coming here on campus, making arrangements to be here on campus in the evenings versus sitting at home in the home office and doing this and save an hour drive time round trip. ArcGIS, everything that runs in a web browser in this class is in the web. Huh? So not now, Kyle, not now. I never made that comment, but it's important. Huh? I thought it's assumed. Don't assume. Huh? But right. so we, we will use different ones. Story maps, based on your question, is a different app level. Uh, not, I have to check if I open up a, a view for the account, but we can do that if you want to test that. Huh? There are a few elements here I see, you probably won't. Because it's blocked based on user levels. Alright. Wanna do a map? Click on map. And this is not Arc Pro. Arc Pro is this down here. Yeah? But I have a map in Arc Pro. I have buttons here in my web map as well. And it might tell you, or you click on, on about, what to do. If I click on content, I see exactly like my table of content in Arc Pro. Here's topography. I can move that map. That's the whole world. Yeah. Can move it around. Spin, spin, spin. Typical standard stuff. Yeah. We have done this. You do this every day on your lap, on your, uh, Smartphone. Yes, please. You had just one. Yeah, I have a question. I'm having trouble at my home computer to download Arc to support my Windows. I can just draw a line and do my work. Yes and no. You got to practice Arc Pro because part of the well, at least one quiz is focusing on Arc Pro. Okay, but if I need to just go that in my computer, I don't have to log in. Yeah. The yeah. Okay. The final project, as an example. I don't care if you do this in Arc Pro or completely online based. I teach you both worlds. You can succeed in both worlds with an excellent grade. All the data, you might have seen this in other classes. The ones who are just starting out today have not seen that. There's a ton of reporting to be done. You can download as Excel or as a PDF and implement that in your work. Huh? If you open this up as a PDF, I don't care, or an Excel spreadsheet, I don't care where you're using it. Yeah. You can run your final presentation in the system here because it will actually ha help you here with bookmarks and there's also a function that you can actually say save as presentation. And I can show different bookmarks and literally fly all over the world or within Broward County and have different views and on data. Or I'm old school and put it on a jump drive on a PowerPoint because who knows if on presentation day my internet is working. The last thing you want to do is a live demonstration and you have no internet. I've seen shop interviews playing the Titanic with that. Where you don't even have a screenshot on the software you wanted to show us from the internet. 
So keep that in mind. Can be risky, but can be mind blowing because you have different dynamics going on. All right. So if I look at content and try to explore my map here again, how this is built, I see my user account. Let's divert a little bit. If I click here on my profile, I get this listing. Yeah. On the top right, there's a, a button you can click on my profile. Yeah. So you can see some information like my role as a student right now. Uh, what's my email or my, my uh, con uh, Earl? This is the organization. And here is my online credits right now. Some of you see one, some see 50, some see 3000. Friedrich has 382. Yeah. You also can see what else is included. What else can I use? So coming back to your question, Chatson, Friedrich, my user right now is allowed to use story maps. So you can explore that if you want to. Huh? All right. However, I wanted to do actually a map. So I go back to my map. If the back button doesn't work, you always can go and say map. So again, mapping frame, data frame, table of content. If you don't see topographic right now, it might be here because you're on about. Content or legend, there are different ways to deal with it. Legend comes into play when we actually have symbology. Symbology is the term for how to color things funny on a map. Huh? Or lie. Remember the example how to lie with the telephone housing units? That is the symbology. All right, topography in the ArcGIS Online. The three dots are always like there's something hidden behind it, like knock, 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 open the door. If I click gently on this one, I could rename this. I click on this here as well, I open up. Right now, I could also say zoom to, transparency. They're all different functions I can use. Remember when I said you have to look through those different layers? What if it's one is closed, completely opaque? Well, if I can open it up like the, the, the blinds at the window, the more I open it up, the more transparency I give. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. We'll play with this. <clears throat> All right, let's change the base map like we did in the other example. Again, this is a different platform. I click once on it, I get all these options. Hey, wait a minute. Arc Pro, if I'm in Arc Pro and go on, on map and change the base map, this looks the same. It's similar because it's drawing from the same pool. Huh? So I can go in the base map and say I change imagery with labels. Okay. How do I found our university? Simple thing. I go down to Florida, find Miami, zoom in. I can zoom in with the plus minuses. Yeah. I can zoom in even with, let's say, holding my button. Use the shift key, holding shift key down, drag and drop that red ang red triangle uh, uh, square. See that red square with the shift button down. Left mouse click. Huh? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Find features I know. Big lake that there's this one cut, a triangle cut here, was well, five seventy five five ninety five is coming in, Weston Davy, significant port, airport, lake lake, competition pool, Armon Nova Southeastern University. Yeah. Like we did it in Arc Pro, we can bookmark this. It's not a bookmark of a web page, it's a bookmark of our map extent. What we're looking at right now, we can bookmark. Look, bookmark was here, big button. Manage bookmarks, add a bookmark, call it NSU. Zoom out square, uh, across the world, find NSU, click, I'm there. 
Super simple, helps to navigate. The better you are with those tools and navigation, the more confident you feel and you're not getting lost, literally lost, when something goes wrong. Yes, please. We play it another time with it. They're, they're interchangeable, not all the time with certain tools, but they are fairly close. Okay? So we have a little bit of time to take a look at what else is out there. Part of the deal that you actually have to pay or to credit for uh, material is there's a huge amount of data provided through data vendors and services. So if I click here on add, it says add data, search for layers, browse the living atlas, add layer from the web, from a file or other notes. So I can load up my own stuff. Yeah? Or right now I browse the living atlas. This is really cool. Make a warning. Some services are to be paid for, depending on how much you look at them. Yeah? But for the purpose of the exercise, let's do this. All right, right now it says there are a little bit more than 4,000 layers available we can access. Can you see that? Do I need to move my screen a little bit? Yeah? For a real estate student, what could be interesting in data for us? Population. Type in population. Hit enter. <coughs> now I can see what out what's out there in population. Haven't prepped for that. That's cool because we can adapt. Let's take the 2016 daytime population USA. You might have seen a different field. Well, the purpose of the exercise is about how to add data, explore and add the data. All right, I clicked here on add content to the map, browse living atlas, come up with the living atlas search function, typed in population, and have list view right now activated. And one of the first hits I found is the USA 2016 daytime population. You also can search for daytime population and it will come back with smaller uh, results. If I click on this, gives you some information, who did it, where to get it, if it's free or not, maybe some limitations, I click add to map. And now I could say, okay, fine, what's the daytime population on these points and click on them and it would tell me, by the way, this is the location census tract, daytime population versus nighttime population. I can go up, close this out and would, I have two on, that's the reason. You have the states and you have the counties and you go for legend. Now, you, if you click on legend, remember, now we have data that displays symbology. Now it would tell us what's going on. For the purpose of showing you an easy way, I'm going to disable with a checkbox click here. Come on, doesn't like me. Should be able to disable this, apparently not. This one doesn't like me. Let's do a different base map. Base map, streets, so you can see this. Yeah. So now you can see on the symbology here, that uh, triangle, or uh, standing ro rhombus, is larger than 150,000 predominant daytime population. So I could click on it or give you this infographic with some more information on it. Alright? Super simple. Someone did this work already for us. If you're really, really critical, you want to know how they did it and where is the data coming from. Let's add one more. Living Atlas Real estate, location, location, location. Let's do traffic counts. So I type in traffic counts. Uh, 
And now here, if I type in traffic space counts, I would get, let's say, the 2019 traffic counts. You can see this is a premium feature, so it will go after credits and add to the map. It's predefined for Redlands, California, so it hops on top of the headquarters of Esri. Uh, but that's not a problem. I can now go across the United States. Would that make sense? Manly, drag and drop over there. Or what else do I have available? Well, oh, what else do I have available? Bookmark. Go to bookmark. Go to NSU. Pops down. We'll take a moment to populate the traffic counts. Huh? So now I can take a look at the traffic counts content. Let's disable my daytime population. Again, visibility is triggered with the checkboxes here. If the checkbox is on, it should show up. Huh? Sometimes it's on and it doesn't show up. That's a different problem we will solve. So now I have daytime here, the traffic counts. If I click on this traffic count here in front of the uni on University Drive, these are the different counts. You can see third most recent traffic, most recent traffic count per day. That's usually how they list it. Yeah. You also could do live traffic. Welcome back. Glad you made it. Huh? Yeah, thank God. <laughs> you also could say, you know what, I only want to look at traffic. World traffic service. Add to the map. Go back to my content. Deactivate everything else that is bothersome. Declutter. So I don't know exactly what's the refresh. But if you refresh rate, but if you would look now at Google Maps and go for the directions, I would think this is almost real time. Even if this is the traffic report last hour, it will change over time. Pardon? Use the search function. Add data. Search for layers. Sorry, um, living atlas. And say transit. If someone published it and shared it, you will find it. Los Angeles transit stops. As an example, first hit I had, add to the map. These are all the transit stops right now with the current live traffic. So, the, so ArcGIS, because I'm looking at the old system, thinking of what I think it was, that made kind of, because I remember we just had to do banks. We had to go to the traffic agency. The traffic agency. The you do that still for other work you do. All right. Because before this was not GIS. And that's one reason why I keep saying I bundle this up for you guys for a whole year to use in other classes. So what if, if I would like to use traffic data in my Arc Pro, where, remember, I was down here, I had a bookmark, I go to a bookmark, go to my NSU. Again, I'm now on this physical machine in front of you. This is right now, what you see on the screen is Arc Pro. And I said add data. And, yeah. If I do add data, it has all these other buttons here. Look at this. This says Living Atlas. Click on Living Atlas. Find more items, search the portal, and I say traffic. And it pops up not as nice looking as the world traffic service. And I click OK. Go back to my bookmark. Just kick me out. I can change the direction, see world imagery on top, can't see anything put it on the back. Now, this is my traffic right now south of 
Nova Southeastern. Or the most recent count I got on this. This is in Arc Pro. This, jump over again across the country, is in a web based system. So, yeah, J James, if you say, hey, I would like to have a PowerPoint slide that shows traffic around the university at a specific time, you don't have to be in front of a computer that has Arc Pro installed. You use your account, you log in on the web page, and create that web based map. It's called Web Map. Yes, please. Uh, so we do the wall traffic one you have on now. It says updated October 27, 2015. Then below it says it's updated in five minutes. So we're Yeah, I would go with creation. And there's also a different thing in Arc. Role, there is also time. Okay. So basically, now you can actually see the time patterns and how it changes. So see that how this color changes in the intensity. Of, yeah, that's typically when it's created, and then it will tell you if it's continued or not. Okay. Yeah. Spatial data just in a different platform. Spatial data just in a different platform. Do you know that, like me, I know a lot of people haven't touched GIS, but me touching GIS five years ago, they have moved a lot. Uh, uh, we're not doing the demo in Pro. We're going to go on the online. So when I taught the first time an Arc GIS online portion in this class, I taught it in week five. And uh, dear alumni almost killing me in the lynching process as in why didn't you not tell us before so that's the reason why we have in the first session the exposure to all the tools and platforms so you know what's coming and you can get prepared for cultural shocks and systems computer base is a cultural shock yes please is there any like live imaging at all on this <sighs> so, uh... For the friends listening in the interwebs, yes, the CIA has live imaging. No, we don't. But, 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 not. Don't, don't want to say that. Don't want to say that. Um, there are no tools in the retail world where you can actually do video processing live, real time, or by frames on traffic counts and patterns on streets. Like the DOTs are doing, if they do, how they actually measure traffic. Like, how they get your license plate and all that, you know? So all this recognition stuff is going more and more into GIS. Um, we are not going to touch that because it's heavily on the computing. And I think there's more value added for you guys to understand the basics and make creations of population, income data, socioeconomics, lifestyle data. Like 25, college graduate, first time job, likes to go to Whole Foods twice a month because the wallet is broken after that. Versus different education level, different housing style, uh, let's say 50 some owns a house, 5,000 square foot, does not own a nine, uh, does not rent an 850 square foot one bedroom studio. Yeah? Different lifestyles, if you just look to your peers, we all drive different cars, different lifestyle. So I can map that out. Depends on the cycles. I, I work with data. That's my, one of my research patterns right now is coming in with data every every month is updated. And I'm basically saying I work annual basis because I have not I don't have the time to update millions of data points every month. It's good enough if I have 2018 complete. Yeah. Yes, so, please. Uh, this is GIS, this is not Facebook, this is one thing, but they work hand in hand. Um, if you, let's say, type in your location on Facebook, and then Facebook tells you, hey, you're now in Seattle and there are events close to you, what, they do, what are they doing? 
They're using your GPS location of your phone and realizing you're not in Fort Lauderdale, you're in Seattle now. And now they're saying close by events, close by things. The same thing now we have a comparison as close by restaurants, close by businesses in GIS. Yeah, there are standard reports you can say, hey, this is the address I'm interested in. Show me all the restaurants and it will give you a list. Yeah, and how to control that is the other thing. Um, data accuracy. Most data you will see gives you a good picture. Does it give you the accurate picture to draw the purest information from it? Don't know. Let's say, give you an example. We use in demographics most likely the census data. The census data is done every 10 years. What's today's date? It's August 2019. So in 2020 is the next assessment year. If you don't have other forms of assessment and surveying on population in between, you're dealing with 2010 data. It's great to show you how to plug in. I had that as, a, as an example for today, prepared for today, but it's more important to deal with the platforms. It's great. I can map out how Weston looked like in 2010 or Plantation or downtown Fort Lauderdale. But it's nine year old or nine years assessed data, eight years reported. So I want to go probably what we call the, let's say the American Community Survey, which was, has the last update is done in November. So right now you're dealing with 2018, 2017 data probably, which has maybe plus minus 4% margin of error in certain reporting of features, age as an example. But that's good enough to get a feel if downtown Las Olas is now average 25 or 35 in age with some wiggle room. Um, that comes back to the old, old question we have, let's say political forecasting, all this polling data. How many, how many data points do you need to make a proper protection for X, Y outcomes? For a yes, no question was 1068 to have a 95 plus minus 3% confidence interval, if I'm not completely mistaken. Sample size to calculate a certain population. Yeah? So we are not going to go do this. I ask you all the time, how well do you know the data? Did you look at the so-called metadata? Did you look at the description here in the online part? Did you look at this description are you going to be okay with this description here? It helps you because if you didn't read the description, hey, we learned just right now that there is actually something about diversity and poverty included in some way. Huh? So it's important to understand where this data is coming from. We're going to have next week, we're going to have a mom few moments where we download data, Broward County GIS, parcels, 600,000, 700,000 data po uh, parcels, outlines. Do we need all of those? No. So we learn how to cut and clip them. Yeah. Are they accurate? Well, they're coming from the responsible reporting agency. So depending on how often they update, I would think that's accurate. It's like your bank account. Your bank account doesn't update in a minute. It updates overnight. Yeah. Your credit card technically updates your statement, exactly, your statement is every billing cycle of, let's say, 20 to 30 days. Yeah? So you got to be aware of that. I had moments in terms of data where, like, it's September. The data update is coming in November. Am I going to wait with all of this until November? Or I'm going, making a call and saying, I'm taking the year before as a complete data set and go with that. That's a judgment call. Um... If you look at real estate data, listing data, and you take a look at, let's say, LoopNet, not all listings on LoopNet are active. They might be some so-called data artifacts. They're not just floating around. Because that one property, I think, we dealt with two years ago in a team project is still on LoopNet. Be sure that hopefully it has actually a uh, contract already. Information on the deed? Who knows when this is updated? So there are all those different data products like critics, 
Uh, what else are the RISDA and all these? They are doing now data integrated 3D and land use up reviews. And Jetson, if not done yet already, probably has a bunch of emails for the test accounts. And all. I think Aaron pulled some demo recently on that. There's a huge machinery behind that to update this data and verify that. There used to be a time where Google was probably still the case. Google, when they started out with local stuff, they didn't name this here the right way. Let's say Daniel Beach was written in the wrong way. There was actually an intake in Google and saying, you could call him up and say, hey, well, you named that park wrong, that's spelled differently. And then over time, it would be an update. Same thing as say Google Maps, aerial photography. Not every area in the earth is flown over with aerial photography at the same time. This comes back to your real-time imagery. You know? There are certain areas they update on a regular basis. There are certain areas you know exactly there is a 10-floor building sitting there, and Google shows it's still agricultural land. Why? Because it's in the middle of nowhere, and they do an update every two years. Now, because there's a lot of money in this data involved. All right, five more minutes before we close down. You guys are ready for one more craziness? One more? All right, so we have this login account, don't we? I'm going to click on here on home. Go to home. I don't care about the map right now if I save it or not. It's quick and easy exploration. Yeah? And I go back here to those dots. App launcher. <clears throat> and click on it. And I go into this application that says business analyst. I also can type in BAO business analyst online dot SV dot com. Click on it or ArcGIS dot com. It will reset it. It will load up. <coughs> they had a recent update two weeks ago. You might see this or not because I have an older account. Your account was created yesterday. So they might assume you don't see it or see it. You see it? Uh, I don't care. I click escape or next, next, close, yeah? Again, might look a little bit different. Let's find the features that are, should be the same. I want to go to projects. You have projects here. I, on my screen, need to find where is my button that says create project. Do you see your button create project? Let's say get started now. Okay, here. Get started now, project. You can see there's different things. We don't have a midterm. Lucky us. And I say create project. All right. So there are different ways to get there. You should see this. Create a project. Yeah? I call that introduction. and click create. So what it does is, remember I talked about buckets? This is my bucket with my user account and the data. I just created the project introduction. I don't want to waste coffee. So this is my introduction right now. And I place it with the bucket of my account in here. I can pull it from the other accounts as well, because this goes with Business Analyst Online, with ArcGIS Online, and Arc Pro. I just need to find where to click on it, okay? Let's do that. Click OK. We'll pop up here with different guided tours. The left side, my content looks a little bit confusing. Yeah, I have a map again. Remember the process of geocoding when I say, hey, type in an address. What's the address of Nova Southeastern University? 3301 College Avenue. F and then David Florida or Fort Lauderdale. Both will work. So the moment I type, 
this search engine starts finding addresses. Huh? So I click here on College Avenue and boom, it hits it. Please note that this is the main administration building address point. Yeah, this is not the center of campus. This is not the business school. So I can move this around and you can see there's a different base map, looks similar, but a few things you can always identify there is at some point the competition pool and campus. Uh, com yeah. Actually, this is, no, this is Nova Middle School. I just wanted to say this mm. is, they, they moved it. So here, this is, we are right now in this building. So it says a few things here on the button. Create a site. Business analyst is site oriented. Points, areas, geographies. And I click on site. Click here on drive time. And now you can see how old I am. I mentioned 10.7 on the other software. My first drive time, I wrote computer scripts for 3.x. Oh, again, decades ago. But now I can generate drive time in 5, 10, and 15 minutes. Let's do this differently. Let's do 10. Type this in. 10, 20, and 40 minutes. You also can do other options. Look at that. Away from there, toward it, using traffic. You can do this for Saturday morning, 8 a.m. or for Friday afternoon, 3 p.m. Going in or out. Right now we don't. And I hit apply. I close on the side so you have more screen. All right. So what does this show is using the speed limits on the different roads. <coughs> it shows you the drive time of 10, 20, and 30, 40 minutes. Huh? So remember when I ask you about how far you away, everyone who said like half an hour, are you still in there? Everyone who said uh, less than 15, 20 minutes, are you still in there? That's kind of okay. If you do it twice or three times, it's like, eh, good, I can show drive time. Some people still default to the circles on a map for a real estate project. But, oh, this is the cool part, and this is what we're building on. Cool part number one, I click on report. I click reports, and here, Esri gives me standardized reports. Let's pick something really funny. That's no oh, basics. Census profile. PDF. Run the report. I can do that as an Excel file. So it saved my report. <laughs> Click on the report. Now I have a PDF file that shows the address, 10 minute drive time. Guys, give me two more minutes and we're done for today. 2000, 2010, estimated rate in 10 minute rate, a uh, drive time on population housing, age breakdown, gender breakdown, type of households. Now it's switched to 10 minutes. Wait, 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 wait. 20 minutes to the end of my 40 minute radius. If I change my drive time, I run this report again, get other data. Um, I can do this in graphics. Go back, click on infographics. <coughs> now in the iPad generation, everything has to be have cute looking icons and all that. What they do is they do cute looking icons. Brochure style marketing, key facts. Yeah, I can change this and set set this up. But the key facts right now, I have this as an educational setup in my drive time area around this location. I have X amount of businesses. I can click on explore more. It pops up. It gives me a breakdown interactive if I want to. I used to have an Excel spreadsheet with the variables covered to be used in those reports. Not gonna lie, I can't remember the exact number, but it's more than 10,000. 
depending on the reporting level you know, and, and the money you put in into the database. So that all set, what we're going to do is we close down right now. The web browser is easy because we don't want to save things. Just X out. Let's see. No, it didn't save it. it didn't save it. So actually, yeah. Let's double check one more thing. View catalog. Let me double check one more thing. If we have that activated, portal my content. Yeah, we'll go back into that. Let's see introduction, my content. This is BA is business analyst. I can now actually go here reports. It should show up with my actual PDF report if it wants to show that. Yeah. Um, I had project data. This is my introduction. I can take a look at introduction. And it show, should show me my drive time. This is just my preview. I did this a second ago in a web browser. Now I'm looking at my computer and I can say add to map number one. I go back to map number one. Now in bluish is my drive time. Yeah, see this all has changed a little bit. We're going in depth later on. But now I can actually switch off my traffic services and even the word imagery. Now I have my drive time. I might need to change a few things how it orders things. But this is all the little gritty details the website doesn't show you. Again, I just pulled out my old coffee cup out of that bucket. I put it on a different machine. That said, this was fun. Next time we're doing even more applied. If you had issues today with logging in on one of those physical machines, we need to tackle this and solve. If you had issues with your ArcGIS online account, log on account as in password is not working we need to change this yeah in two weeks we're going to have our first mini quiz exam so what we're going to do is we explore today we're playing and working on a small demos and examples and functions and open up our universe next week and then week three according to the schedule we're going to have a quiz as in, hmm, let's pull, let's say, traffic data on a map and PDF that map. That could be, let's say, one example of how I test your skills in dealing with this software. Huh? And um, we're going over the course of the semester, we're going to be more in depth. I'll also give you more freedom on which platform you want to work with. I have a prediction to make. About 75% of this class is sticking with the online world because you find it easier, a little bit and more convenient with the stuff you want to do. Yeah? Question. Yes, please. How did you link that from the, um, from the online version to the other one? Because Friedrich Schiller locked in on both worlds online. And using your arc, your named user, your cloud account for the local machine. Okay. So that's the reason why the system knows right now this is Friedrich. Uh, I got that part. You want to, how to plug that in? Yeah, I didn't come, I didn't uh, come up online at all. I went to catalog. Yeah. And in catalog, in the catalog pane, again, this is with you. You can actually go catalog view, catalog pane, are diff two different ones. Uh, you can find here portal, living atlas, my content. I clicked on my content. And this is everything that's associated with me right now from the online ex environment. You said it's my yep. Portal. Okay. All right. portal. See, this is, it, sometimes it's X out, but I can even group, do group work. Uh, and have change, change in group work and all that. We're going to explore this step by step. All right. I encourage you guys to play with this. If it's an online thing, if you have another class outside of my classroom and you're bored, open up ArcMap online, play with it. Huh?
If it's my class, like it starts in 30 minutes, no online GIS in my class. Ah, uh, that's it. Have a good day. I might have answers. <laughs>